Hey everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com. Today I'm going to go over a beginner's tutorial of Gmail. You've probably seen some of my Google Docs tutorials, but this is going to be about a 10 to 15 minute tutorial and I'm just going to go over the basics of Gmail and how new users should get started using their Gmail account. So, when you first log into your Gmail account, you're going to be in your inbox, which you can tell because it's highlighted in red over here. Now, your account should look similar to mine. I've got some test emails that I've sent myself so that we can work with some actual emails today. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over these different links over here on the left. We're actually going to move some links around even. I'm going to talk about sending emails, receiving emails, getting your signature set up, some other Gmail settings, and then we're going to go ahead and play with some labels, which are kind of like folders here in Gmail. So, first thing that you're going to want to do is all of these links over here on the left, you'll notice that there's a more link at the bottom with an upside down triangle. If you click on that, you're going to have a few more links. You're going to have chats, all mail, spam, and trash. Now just to make things a little bit easier, I would recommend dragging three of these, all mail, spam, and trash, up to your main links up here so they're always visible. So to do that, you're just going to click and drag. So I'm just going to click and drag all mail up to the top. Same with spam and the same with trash. So now I've got those links up here with all my other ones so that I can kind of always see them. And then I'll go ahead and I'll close this, this more tab again. So um, obviously this is your inbox. The number next to your inbox is the number of unread messages, not the number of total messages that you have in your inbox. If we go down a link here, this is the starred link. What this is, is if, you, if you notice, between the checkbox of your emails on the left and the sender of your emails over here on the right, there's this little grayed out star. And if you click on it, it turns yellow. So this is just a quick way to mark emails in Gmail. If you click on the starred link, it's going to show you only the emails you've starred. So you can use that for different purposes. I use it for bills that I haven't paid yet. I give it a star so I know I need to do something with it. Then once I've paid the bill, I can go ahead and unstar it. So it's just kind of a quick reminder for you. Important, this is something that I don't use too much. It's a new feature of Gmail, but basically what Gmail has done is they learn how you use your email. So if a computer were to open up their email and read their emails, they would read them in the exact order that they were received. So they would read the oldest one first, then the next one, then the next one. Well, we don't work quite like computers do. We actually read our emails based on who the sender is, what the subject is. So let's say you come into work or you open up your email every day and you've got 10 emails and you tend to open up emails from a certain person. Maybe that person's an important person in your life, whatever. Um, Gmail will learn that you always open those emails first and they'll start to mark emails from that person as important. So the important tag is this little label looking icon next to the star. And if you click it, you'll notice that that also turns yellow. Um, so as you use your Gmail account, you'll probably notice emails coming in that have that um, symbol next to it. The next link down is the sent mail folder here on the left. And what that is, is those are messages that have been sent. So if you forget what you've sent somebody, you can go ahead and click on that link and you'll be able to see the emails you've sent. Pretty self-explanatory, just like other email systems. The drafts folder is emails that have been composed but not yet sent. So there's two ways an email gets in the draft folder. One way is when you're composing a message, which we're going to talk a little bit more detail here in a few minutes, you can have the option to go, so if I go ahead and I enter um, an email address here and a subject, um, we'll just say subject. I can go ahead and I can hit save now. When I do that, it sends this email to my drafts folder. So let's say you're composing an email, you realize you need some more information, you can hit the save now button, the email's going to go to your drafts folder, and you can go ahead and finish composing it later on. The other way that an email goes to the drafts folder is Gmail has an autosave feature. And I don't know what the exact timer on it is, but theoretically, if you've spent three or four minutes composing an email, all of a sudden your computer dies, you should be able to log back into your Gmail account and access that email. So that's what the drafts folder is for. Okay, the all mail folder. This is something that's a little bit different. It's kind of revolutionary in terms of email. What this is, is I like to think of it as the black hole of Gmail. Every email that exists in your Gmail account is going to be in this all mail folder. So where it really comes into play is with the idea of message archiving, which I'm going to talk about briefly right now. Um, so if you'll notice, if you go back to your inbox, and let's say we read this email, we've done what we need to do with it, we would normally delete it. Okay, so you'll notice that there's a trash can button right here, and we can go ahead, I'm just going to hide this, we can go ahead and we could delete it. Now, we think the reason we delete emails is to clean up, get rid of clutter, get messages out of our inbox, but the real reason we ever had the option to delete an email was because we didn't have enough space to keep it. Back in 1995, you would send somebody an email and half the time you'd get an email back saying, we're sorry, but this person's inbox is too full to receive messages, please try again later. 
Now, if you look down at the bottom of your Gmail account, it tells you how much space you have. You have 7,686 megabytes of space. So you've got 7.6 gigs of space. That's a ton of space. All right. And now if you're sending videos and images back and forth, that might fill up eventually. But just your regular emails, that's almost never going to fill up. So unless you're 100% sure you need to delete an email, I would recommend archiving it. And what that is, is it's basically you'll see that the first button up here at the top of our toolbar is called archive. And if you notice, I'm going to go back to my inbox. I have this email in my inbox. So I open it and do what I need to do. Instead of deleting it, I archive it. And you'll notice right away it's out of my inbox. And really, there's only two ways I can find this email now. I can go to my all mail folder, because all my emails that are in my Gmail account are in my all mail folder. So here it is. But eventually, if you keep archiving your messages, your all mail folder is going to get really full. So it's not going to be prudent to actually go into your all mail folder and look through it. So another way you could find this email would be to use search. So I can even search based on the content within an email. So um, if I look, this is Google privacy policy. So if I go to my inbox and I just go up here and I search Google privacy policy and hit enter, you'll notice, boom, email's right there. So Gmail, Google, known for search, Gmail has the feature as well and it's pretty powerful. So for most of the messages that I try and find in my account, I just use the search. But we're going to talk about labels later on, which are basically folders for Gmail, so that'll help out as well. Um, so like I said, unless you're 110% sure you're never going to need an email again, don't delete it, archive it. It's going to take it out of the way, it's going to be out of your inbox, you're not going to see it when you log into your account, you're not going to go to your all mail folder because it's going to be, it's basically an archive. Um, but that email will still exist, so if you do need it in the future, you'll be able to access it. So it's a pretty important feature to start getting used to doing. The spam folder, um, obviously Gmail has a list of known spam senders. If you get an email from one of those senders, it's going to automatically go to the spam folder. If you get an email in your inbox that's spam, you can just either open the email or hit the checkbox next to it and hit this exclamation point button. That's the report spam button. When you do that, it's going to send that email into your spam folder. Now if you were to get another email from the same address, it would automatically go to the spam folder. If the opposite happens, you get an email in your spam folder that's not spam, like this one, you can go ahead and open it up or hit the checkbox and hit not spam. It's going to send it back to your inbox and it's going to remove that sender from the spam list. Uh, so that's how the spam folder works. Obviously below that you've got your trash folder. That's where messages go when they've been deleted. Both the spam folder and the trash folder will be emptied after 30 days. So if you send a message to spam or send a message to the trash, 30 days later you're not going to be able to get it back. So you definitely want to think twice before doing that. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of these links over here on the left. Let's talk about your signature and some settings real quick. So to access your Gmail settings, you can go over here and you can click on this gear icon that says settings. When you click on that, you can click on settings. And now we'll be brought to all of the Gmail settings. So you can see there's a bunch of tabs up here at the top. We have generals, labels, accounts and import, filters, forwarding, chat. Labs is something that's really cool that we'll take a look at in a second. Um, but most of the stuff you're going to do in your Gmail settings is in this general tab. So you can, I'm not going to go through everything here. You can look through this on your own time. But here's where your signature is. So when it comes time to fill out your signature, go ahead and click this second radio dial below no signature and go ahead and just put in a signature. So I could put my name and my email address. All right. And you could put, you know, what, obviously whatever you want. Once you finish with that, just scroll to the bottom, go ahead and hit save changes. And now when you hit compose, your signature will automatically show up in an email. That's your signature. Now let's talk about composing and receiving messages real quick. So if I were to go to compose a message, I would hit this big red button here on the left side of Gmail, opens up a new message screen, and I can go ahead and you'll see I have my to field, I can enter an email address. Cool thing about Gmail, once you send an email to somebody, it's going to remember that email address. So that's going to auto populate if you go to send them another email, the same person, another email in the future. It's a pretty cool future. If you want to use carbon copy or blind carbon copy, you can just click on those links to enact these fields. Carbon copy obviously sends a copy of a message to somebody. Um, the person who it's sent to directly in the main to field sees that this person was copied. If you put somebody in the blind carbon copy field, this person up here will get the message, so will the person in the blind carbon copy field, but the person that it was sent directly to will not see that anybody else was copied, so it's kind of a way to hide that you're copying a message. So it's kind of a cool feature. It's, it's pretty standard with most email accounts. Then you've got your subject. You can attach a file. Um, you can actually drag files in here um, to attach them as well. You've got all your formatting tools up here. Uh, if you want to do spell check, Gmail has a check spelling button over here on the left, but most browsers have spell check built in nowadays, so you'll see Obviously, I start typing, spell a word wrong, it's underlined in red. I can right click and pick the word that I was trying to spell. So, once your message is composed, you can go ahead and hit the send button. Pretty self explanatory. 
Um, so if we talk about receiving messages real quick, I'm just going to discard this message. So if I receive a message, say I get this um, e-bill reminder. Now let's say I wanted to reply, reply to all or forward this message. You see I have my options down here at the bottom. So if I want to reply, I can just hit reply. It's going to open up a new message. The original message is copied below, so the person's going to know what conversation thread you're responding to. And then you can go ahead and compose your message. See, this is a test message. Um, if I, in the middle of composing this, I realized, oh no, I want to reply to all or forward, I can just click one of these tabs up here. It's going to retain the message I typed, but I can go ahead and enter a different email address. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. Um, and then when you're done, you just hit send, and your message is off. Um, so that is composing messages. Now to finish it off real, real, real quick here, I want to talk about labels. Labels are essentially folders. Oh, we're just going to discard that in Gmail. So you'll notice over here on the left, you have these three labels, follow-up, miscellaneous, and priority. Those are the default labels that are automatically created when you create a new Gmail account. So let's say I want to put this email that we were just using into one of these labels so I could easily access it later on. I can either click the checkbox or open the email, and you'll notice that there's a labels drop down here at the top. If I click on it, it's going to list all the labels I currently have in my account. So if I want to label it priority, I go ahead and hit the checkbox, hit apply, You'll notice right away it ha now has the priority tag up here on the top. If I go to my inbox, we'll see that the tag priority is next to the email. And if I click on priority over here on the left, there's the email. So now what I could do is I could go ahead to my inbox and I could archive this email. It takes it out of my inbox, not going to see it when I sign in my account. But if I need to find that email again in the future, I can easily just click on the priority label over here on the left and there's my email. So that's how you can label an email. Um, label an email. If you want to create your own custom label, you can go ahead and click on this more drop down that we, that we opened up earlier and you can hit create new label. So I'm just going to call this test label. Go ahead and hit create and you'll notice that the label now shows up on the left with my other labels. If I go ahead and open an email, click the label drop down, my new label is also listed there so I can give it that label. Go back to my inbox and you'll see that the test label is now being used. Um, you can give emails multiple labels. So I gave this email a test label. Now let's say I also hit the checkbox and I want to give it a miscellaneous label. So now we'll see that both labels are listed in my inbox. Click on miscellaneous, there's the email. Click on test label, there's the email. So that's how you can label your emails. One last thing I want to mention real quick is if you mouse over your labels over here on the left, you'll notice that there's an upside down triangle next to it. It's a drop down menu. If you click on it, you can customize almost everything about that label. So it's really um, useful if you add colors to your labels because once you get a bunch of labels in your email, um, they start to all kind of look the same and it's hard to tell the difference between each one. So if you give them different colors, you can really see the difference. So if I give all my labels colors, go to my um, mail folder, you'll see these two labels that I've emailed I can now easily distinguish. I guess I gave these two very similar colors, so not so much. But now you can see I can easily distinguish between my different labels because they have colors. Um, so they pretty much work like folders, um, but they're different because you can give an email as many labels as you want. Um, so that's a quick overview of Gmail. Hope it helps. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comments section below or on my blog, AntonAlex.com, um, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. So signing off for now, this is Anson, AntonAlex.com.